Good morning, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, August the 24th. This is a video version of the 401st weekly Kitchissippi Ward newsletter. Uh, reminder, there's uh, lots of links and more information about the topics we'll discuss in the weekly newsletter to which you can subscribe at kitchissippiward.ca. Things are starting to uh, resume a bit more of their normal pace at uh, City Hall after a bit of a summer break. Councillors are getting back to their desks after taking some short vacations. Uh, committee and council meetings are starting to uh, roll back out again. Um, personally speaking, I'm a little preoccupied with trying to understand the full implications of the new provincial policy statement that came out last week. Uh, really important document, guidance from the province to cities in Ontario about how they're going to grow. Uh, some of the early changes that I'm able to uh, discern are an elimination of reference to climate change, absolutely uh, doubling down um, uh, on intensification as a growth strategy. There is uh, some interesting language in there. They've gotten very specific, which I wouldn't have expected in a high-level policy document around things like redeveloping the parking lots of uh, shopping malls, an emphasis on student housing, but overall a very sort of housing forward provincial policy statement that will be in effect for you know likely the next five years or so. Uh, so I'm uh, trying to find time to do a thorough analysis of that. Um, and then of course the comprehensive zoning bylaw work never stops. I did just want to pass on to residents uh, with respect to that comprehensive zoning bylaw. We're going to talk about an open house that's coming up, but don't stand on ceremony. If you have concerns or thoughts, please do send those to me and to the city as they occur to you. Um, we're not looking for a one big submission approach on this one. I think the most productive way to provide your input is really on an ongoing basis so that staff can capture that input and um, uh, start working to address it in the next draft. Um, I do have some pop-up office hours. Uh, those are resuming. I'm uh, really happy to say that on Tuesday, August the 27th, from 10 until 1, I'll be at Westboro Books. That is at 314 Richmond Road for pop-up office hours. Those are an opportunity to come by anytime during those hours without an appointment to chat with me one-on-one -on -one about whatever is on your mind. Um, I am going to uh, put another reminder in this week's newsletter about Mayor Sutcliffe's uh, um, initiative to get a better deal for Ottawa on two issues. The first of which is payment in lieu of taxes, which is what the federal government pays us instead of paying property tax based on value for their properties. And obviously they are a very significant landowner. Uh, the mayor has identified shortfalls in the amount that they have been paying for us over the years that have very substantial implications for our finances at the city of Ottawa. And uh, also he is uh, going to Queen's Park asking for a better deal on transit. There is uh, operational funding for LRT systems in um, uh, the GTA. There is 100% funding on, on some of the capital side. Uh, really, he's looking for a better deal for Ottawa, again with, I think, profound implications for our long-term financial sustainability. So I've got a note in the newsletter to uh, point people to the mayor's petition. If you're not comfortable signing the mayor's petition, write to your MPP or your MP after reading the information and demand fairer treatment for Ottawa moving forward. Um, there is also, I've recreated in the newsletter this week, um, a statement that was put out by both Councillor Troster and myself jointly on the closing of the supervised consumption site at the Eccles location of the Somerset West Community Health Centre. Uh, you probably saw headlines this week that the Ford government has determined to yank funding from supervised consumption sites that are within a certain location of schools and daycares. In this particular instance, as far as we can tell, the daycare that is um, uh, causing issues for Somerset West is one that is actually run by Somerset West. Still trying to digest the details, but Councillor Troster and I uh, believe extremely um, uh, strongly and fervently supervised consumption sites are a way to mitigate community harm by um, permitting drug use in a supervised setting instead of in the community. Um, and it saves lives. And, and that science is incontrovertible. 
Uh, it saves people's lives to have supervised consumption sites. This is a, uh, a regressive and backwards move by the Ford government that I think is going to have broad implications, negative implications, right across our city for lots of people um, in, in communities. Uh, there's a hazardous household waste depot coming up at Tunney's Pasture. I know many of you wait for that and you've probably already seen notice of it, but that's going to be held on Sunday, September the 8th from 8 until 4 p.m. Remember the hazardous waste depots are not an electronics pickup. That's for uh, your old paint cans, Varsol, uh, gasoline, propane tanks, what have you. Um, and remember there is a special pickup um, during that depot for those who arrive on foot or by bike that is a bit more convenient than waiting in those long lines of uh, cars. So 8 to 4, September the 8th at Tunney's Pasture. Um, right, the zoning bylaw uh, open house that I mentioned earlier is going to be held this week on August the 29th. Uh, there will be some ward specific breakout rooms. They're going to focus on parts of the comprehensive zoning bylaw proposal that will affect uh, Kitchissippi Ward particularly. Our session is being held jointly with Rita Rockliffe and Rita Vanier. So really those sort of rapidly intensifying neighborhoods. Great opportunity to learn more about what the comprehensive zoning bylaw uh, proposes, what its implications are going to be, and to have a bit of feedback. I will just caution again this week, it's going to be at a fairly high level. Those of you who are very conversant with uh, zoning, very conversant with the comprehensive zoning bylaw um, initiative will uh, probably not get as much out of it but if you are uh, struggling or, or don't necessarily have a lot of familiarity with um, uh, the comprehensive zoning bylaw what zoning is how the city plans I think this is going to be a great session for you Another reminder that on September the 4th, the Committee of Adjustment uh, has one hearing on its schedule for our ward. It's a biggie at 388 Richmond Road. McDonald's is seeking a variance in order to be allowed to vary the amount of parking that they're required for their proposed new restaurant uh, from 18 spots to zero. Uh, I've done a bit more digging since I got back from holidays on that one. Um, back in 2017, we largely eliminated parking requirements for restaurants uh, and businesses of a certain size. The um, McDonald's is getting caught because that second level mezzanine gives them a gross floor area that seems to push them over the threshold. There is some question as to how the zoning bylaw should be interpreted. Should the first exempt portion continue to be exempt um, and then just add parking based on the formula for what goes over that exemption threshold? Um, that, if that is the case, that would bring their required parking down from 18 spots to one, that's largely a rubber stamp uh, variance. Obviously, 18 is a very different proposition. Uh, there's more information, a link to their application in the newsletter. The 2025 budget consultations are getting underway. I've telegraphed before. I think this is going to be a particularly raucous budget season. Lots of discussion about city finances. There is a link in the newsletter to a survey on the Engage Ottawa website, uh, at which you can sort of have a, a high level input of what your priorities are for the budget this year. But, uh, you know, as we get back to our desks over the course of the next week or so, uh, there will be a lot of discussion about this year's budget. Uh, um, this newsletter will probably come out before the Pride Parade tomorrow for those of you who are planning to attend. Just a quick note that the route has been shortened. Uh, it will start at Elgin and Laurier as usual at 1 o'clock. It will travel south on Elgin, uh, then end at Bank and Gladstone. So if you ordinarily take a look at uh, or uh, watch the parade from another location, uh, you might want to get along that route instead. A uh, quick note that there is um, uh, For Our Kids, which is a, um, a grassroots advocacy organization uh, working to make cycling safer for kids, is holding another kidical mass ride. Uh, that one's going to go through our neighborhood here in Kitchissippi. It is going to be on September the 28th, starting at La Roche Park. People will meet at 930 to decorate bikes, dance, chalk, uh, and make new friends. At 10.05, uh, the uh, ride will start, go through parts of the neighborhood, 
and it will return by 11. I've got a link to their Facebook event and a bit more information in the newsletter that will come out later today or tomorrow. Um, and I'm able to start talking about some of the meetings that are resuming. Uh, planning committee is going to meet this week on uh, Wednesday, the, uh, August the 28th. It's a relatively full agenda. There's a fair number of uh, properties and rezonings that are being um, uh, discussed uh, for potential rezonings. A couple in the East End in Orleans South Navin, a nine-story mid-rise at 381 Kent that I don't think will be particularly contentious. There, uh, we need to, um, uh, or the applicant is seeking permission for um, access to uh, Prince of Wales Drive at 9 Gurdwara Road. Uh, that is in Knoxdale, Maribel. Again, I don't expect that that's going to be particularly contentious. But the development at uh, Cleary, at 30 Cleary, which is the Unitarian campus, I expect lots of delegations as a um, six-story mid-rise uh, that would be to the benefit of, I believe, the Ottawa Aboriginal Coalition as they build a low, um, or sorry, affordable Aboriginal housing, uh, as well as a 16-story general market mid-rise is proposed. I know the residents on, on Aylin are concerned about the proximity to their homes, and there is concern on the Unitarian campus and Unitarian house about uh, having a single point of access, uh, entry and egress uh, from that development. So we'll hear those arguments um, at the uh, at the committee. Uh, again, I, I generally think this is a good proposal and deserves to move forward, but that debate will happen on Wednesday. Uh, the election audit compliance, or sorry, the election compliance audit committee is also going to meet on Wednesday. That's uh, citizen members only. We, uh, we appoint an elections audit committee at the beginning of the term. They hear things like complaints about campaign financing. Uh, they'll be taking a look at the audit of Horizon Ottawa as a third party advertiser and determining whether or not uh, to uh, uh, recommend that the city commence legal action against Horizon Ottawa. Uh, this one is, uh, is a frustrating one. Rules are rules, obviously. We're talking about a minuscule amount of money. I'm not sure how far um, the city should go in expending our own funds, presumably uh, several times in uh, excess of what Horizon Ottawa is uh, purported to have uh, misspent or, or taken in uh, on uh, the wrong basis. But that is up to the Election Audit Compliance Committee. We, um, as politicians, will be hands off to that. And then the Light Rail Subcommittee is going to meet on August the 29th. They're going to get an update on the Stage 2 light rail construction. Uh, obviously, we as politicians, and I know you as residents, are hoping to hear that the trial running period for stage two LRT, the Trillium line will have begun. Uh, we're not getting any insight uh, in that today as uh, city councillors, but obviously it is important that we get line two open and one of the big steps will be the commencement of the 14 day trial running period. Fingers crossed for good news, link in the newsletter to that report, which other than that big issue is very comprehensive in terms of how line two is going. Uh, and then it's not online yet with an agenda, but uh, City Council will be meeting on September the 4th. Um, and then I know Transit Commission is going to be meeting on September the 12th. That Transit Commission meeting is probably one of the best opportunities we have as council to push back at the decision to reduce the frequency on the um, Confederation line. So I expect that that will be a relatively um, contentious and, and well-watched meeting. Kitchissippi, it is beautiful. Pride Parade is tomorrow. I will be on uh, a float with uh, Councillor Troster, I hope some others, uh, to celebrate uh, Pride in our city. I hope you have a great weekend no matter how you spend it and thank you for watching.